Okay. So again, uh, in this case, the straight edge is going to be really helpful. Um, I already sketched out just a slight piece <coughs> with the uh, handle, but let me just show you from the beginning. As you zoom into that uh, reference file, you can really get to see uh, details. You can also see the um, resolution. But um, this is no more than just a rectangular shape for the, the base of this and wrapped around this part. <coughs> the overall parts of the uh, bristles that you see are centered. There is a center line right to the handle, and you can actually see the gap right there. So again, just trying to build up that rectangular piece. And if I f try to find the center, if this is in the perspective and or isometric kind of sketch, there's the center line. I can wrap that around. And the actual broom part is on the opposite side where you see the, the handle for it. So I'm just going to jot it down a little bit further and setting it up like that. So that part's kind of laid out. The part that has the cone, I mean, if you really wanted to do it, you could take a look and count these. There's about seven on either side. It looks like eight of them on either side. So you could try to try to lay that out, but it's trying to give you that piece. Inside there, if we actually had the piece, it would be a cylinder taking it up on the top side. And then if you just, just kind of slowly building this up real quickly here. <laughs> this has a little bit of overlap and underlap. So it's building that part up, almost looks like teeth. And uh, taking a look where you can kind of see a little bit of the opposite side of this section. I'm just going to make a tangent right here on that tank, so not overlapping. The only part I'm overlapping is this X. So when I take a look at this cylinder, I'm just going to push it over just a little bit onto this side. And that's where I'm going to start to use the uh, straight edge to actually shade it at the same time. So. <coughs> And I'll switch it over onto this side here a little bit. Okay. So taking uh, just this point, it already has a beginning and end. There's the edge to it. Here's the opposite edge. But as I sketch this out, I'm just going to take the uh, the straight edge, and just shade it and kind of push the straight edge a little bit so it's giving me that ability to make that line, and then drop it down to make the, the base stone so it helps me make a pretty straight straight edge right from the beginning. <clears throat> so it's just kind of uh, building up there, and I'm kind of pulling and pushing at the same time using the tool that way, and then lining it up to here to give me that straight edge. And then way up at the top here, it does have a cylindrical shape, but it's on the opposite end that I cannot see. <clears throat> and so then it's just a matter of coming back down to this section and taking a look. So this is definitely in the shadow side. This picture doesn't really have a strong light source. It's kind of a soft, overcast light, but it's still enough to give me just what I need. And if I take a look at each individual one, and try to shade it with left to right so it has that value to it individually to start off with. And it's almost like doing a doing the hair, you just have to follow the stroke, let the stroke emphasize it. The top part of this this has a tone to it, so I can actually bring it down like that, shade it right there. Find this edge, it's gonna be darker. And then just wrap it around this piece here. So all these sections have a darker value to it. Shows the outer edge, the top of that. And this part also has a little bit underneath. So there it gives you at least a pretty good beginning to it. <coughs> Again, this part is gonna have, just like a gradient right here, a darker value to a lighter value, placing it in there, and depending, kind of getting a sharp, sharper edge on the pencil, and just kind of highlighting that piece. So again, you're looking at it, but always trying to enhance the, the values to it.
<coughs> you can always put a scrap piece of paper underneath so you're not overdoing the smearing anything. So here's the line. So now, <coughs> any texture that I put in here, you can't really see the texture when you think of the individual strands of this, but as you just draw the lines, you know, making them thick and thin or going around that piece, that's going to give you the edges that you're looking for. So see if you can't start that off again. It's pretty much a geometric shape that does have some organic to it, <clears throat> just like the handle on the previous one. The dark value is coming down into here, so you can make that a gradient tone coming down. And see what you can put into there. <clears throat> if you wanted something that was really, you could put the, like a piece of paper here too, and just draw from the top of the paper onto the drawing, and it'll give you a, an edge that you couldn't get to go in the other direction. So it's kind of a little template, just like a straight edge, only using it for the shading. <clears throat> or the way it would just be to butt up the piece this way. So always look for anything that'll help you, any little trick. Let's see what you can come up with here. And then this one is since it's all shaded, it doesn't matter the texture. You can just even leave like one highlight there, and the texture is going to really emphasize itself. Let me zoom in here a little bit. So what I mean is this whole sides in shadow, and it'll lose the texture, but the rest of it indicates that it has that strand, so it's going to still read correctly. Again, if you take a look at the, the rest of it as you're trying to delineate this again, this part starts off as being a pretty crisp piece of wood, but as it gets used or worn and torn, it's going to get banged up and rounded off or chipped. So you start looking for details like that. Okay. blending this in so that this has a base tone, but when you take a look at it, you're trying to f force that issue. Here's the part where I could put the paper there. I could also put a straight edge here, just so it lines up nice and crisp, and it gives me that line. So that has the base tone, the reflected light, and the highlight up on the top there. edges to it because this is the cylinder part. using a straight edge to emphasize that corner. And this part too. So again, it's a simple, simple object, but with the drawing you can also simplify it, but you're trying to give it the complexity. Try to keep it interesting. You're taking a kind of an average object and trying to enhance it. Again, if this had the uh, cast shadow, if I wanted to place it in there between the base and here, <coughs> again, you could just take a straight edge from where it would be setting. Here it's on, a, on an actual ledge, but if it was sitting down, you could almost keep the shadow right from here, blending across as it comes down, and it 
the light might lose all of it depending on the accent of it. Let's see if you can get the object in there. And there you go.